Okay, welcome to the last of the video series, and this time I am going to show you how to create a map layout. So one of the things that I really want you to do is turn off your imagery. I don't want to see it, I just want to see the work that you have done, it just makes it easier for me to read. I know some people like to have something in the background, that's not what the purpose of this is, I'm just looking for what work you've done in your area. Um, and you can get pretty fancy with it, so I guess if, if you find a way to like keep it so that all of this is obvious and not the base map, then that's great. Um, I'm not going to show that in this class, but anyway. So we're going to create a map layout. So in order to create a layout, you go to insert and there's going to be new layout. So when you click on new layout, depending on the area that you were um, collecting data in, you can either do a landscape or a portrait. So I want you to use a letter size. And with that, I don't care, either orientation is fine. I'm just going to use a portrait. So now that I've, now that it, I've said, okay, I want a layout, there's nothing on it. It's completely empty. One thing I'm going to note is that over on the side here, you're going to see a folder now that says layouts. So this is where if I accidentally close that layout, it's still there. So I can double click and it will pull it up. So don't ever worry if you accidentally click this X button. So the first things first, we need to put our map onto the piece of paper. So I'm going to go up to map frame here and I'm going to find the map that I did. So there's two different options here. You can choose whichever one you want, either, either work. I'm going to use this one though. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to draw a rectangle on here. Now, don't worry if it doesn't seem to fit perfectly, that is fine. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just because I want my piece of paper to be my map. I'm not looking for it to be my all the other stuff on the outside. Make it a little bit bigger. And then what I can do is adjust the scale. So down here, actually I can't do that yet because if I try to do anything, notice that it just stays in the in the box. So I have to activate the inside of this, this box because I can have lots of boxes. So I just have to choose which one I'm activating. So make sure that you have the little squares on the side of your the box. And you're going to go up to the tab that says layout in the menu. And then you're going to click this word activate. So now in the activate, we can go down to the scale and I can adjust it. So I'm going to use something that's a round number. And then I want to move this so that it actually fits nicely in the center. You may find that five, 1 to 5,000 works. You may find that 1 to 5,000 doesn't. I would prefer if it is a nice round number because otherwise um, it would be a funny map number to use. So I, obviously in my class when you do calculations I want the exact number but when you create a map you want it to be a round number because it's easier for people to work with. So once you've centered it and found a good scale for yourself then you're going to go back up to layout and you're going to say close activation. Now we're going to insert all of the different marginalia that belongs on the map. So here we're going to start with a north arrow. So you click the down arrow, choose whichever north arrow you like, and then you're just going to draw a spot for it to go and it will draw the north arrow for you. Same with the scale bar. I'm going to click on the scale bar. Now here you are going to use metric. Do not use imperial. Always use metric because you're dealing with Canadian system. So you can choose whichever one you like and then you can add that scale bar. Now when we lo are looking at the scale bar you can see there's overlapping numbers. It's decimals. It's kind of a weird thing to be working with. So and it's in kilometers and I really didn't go kilometers. I just want it to be in met uh, into meters. So I'm going to right click on this um, actually, you can just do it by double clicking actually. So if I double click on the on my scale bar, I'm going to have an element window open that says scale bar. Now here is where the map units are. So my units I'm going to switch to is in meters. So you can see it automatically goes to meters and, um, and then the text also says meters. So I'm happy with that. And I can change the size of this to change the numbers. So there's 200. So that's what I, that makes more sense to me to use 200. Move that over. 
So now I've got my scale bar. I can also include my legend. Now your legends are going to be quite large. So I'm, I'm just giving you a heads up on that. So um, I'm just going to use legend one. It's just a default. It gives me everything that I need. And then I can draw a box with your legend. And you can see these three dots here it's saying, hey, there's more stuff there. There's more stuff there. <laughs> so there we go. Finally, I got it. So if you're finding that it's like way too long that way, then you might want to change the size of this. And then move that one out of the way. And then you can change the legend to actually be larger this way. And then it'll reduce down the number of columns for you. Make it smaller. And in fact, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller anyways, because I don't want it to be so big. Now, I'm really picky about this. I know that it's not necessarily a normal thing for people to be super picky. <laughs> but um, when you double click on this legend, you're going to see this option of the title. If you want the title, that's fine, but do not call it the legend. I know it's a legend. I want some. I want you to tell me what the legend is about. So with the legend, you are going to, if you want to name it something, you could call this, like, for example, Sage Features. That's totally fine. Um, or you can just turn it off entirely and not have it show at all. And you can see it disappears. But I do not want it to say legend. So notice that the title changes. All right, so now once you've got the legend in there, we can use something called dynamic text for the remaining things. So the dynamic text, I can click down. And there's a few things that I can start with. So for example, the scale, I can click on scale and I can add the scale to my map by drawing a little box and it will add it. So now I've got my scale ratio and it will match this one down here. So if I change the scale in here, this will update and that will update. Everything will update as we go. The other thing I can add in here is the time. So if I go down here, I have my system time. So look for system and look for current time. And I need that on my map. So I put that down here. Now it shows the three dots, so I'm going to double click on this and I want to click on this little box here. I really don't care about the time. <laughs> I, I do care about the date though. So I'm just going to delete that and then I just have my date, which will keeps it nice and simple for me, easy to read. So this is my copyright date of me creating this map. Put that somewhere so I can see it. And now another one that some people like to use is the spatial reference. I do not like using the spatial reference um, because you really have to go through and select things. So for example, if I do this, you're going to see all the data that gets involved there. I can just type it out. I know what the, the spatial reference is, so I don't need it as a dynamic text. So to do my own typing, there's this straight text option. So I can click that and I can draw a box. And it'll tell me text. So this one, I can you can see if I double click on it, I get a little text box. So in here, I can actually put in all the information that I need. So for example, I I created the map, so I'm going to put my name in there, and then I'm also going to say the map projection. So um, you use UTM. And then we use the datum of NAT83, and this is in zone 11 where I'm located. Yours might be in a different zone. And then we have the map projection. Now I can have the data source citation. So I can put this in. So the first thing was that the digitized data was all created using the Esri base map. So I can, I can break this down into the first one. And so my digitized data was acquired through ArcGIS base maps in or on November 27th, 2023. So that's the first data citation. The second one that would be is the data that I collected with my GPS. So I always need to self reference my like self-reference so the reason for that is because I used equipment and I used an app and because of those two things I need to cite that I did that I also need to state when I actually did the 
the field collection. So in here, I have, I, I'm going to say the, the GNSS data was self-collected on whatever day you collected it using an iPhone 11. That's what I happen to have. And the ArcGIS field maps app. That way, I have covered what equipment I used, and I've covered the app, and I've covered the date that I collected it. So if there's any errors, I can go back and check all of that. So now that I've got that, I can um, just click out of the box, and it will automatically update. So now it's really big here, and so I really want to make it smaller because that looks really big. So maybe what I'll do is I'm going to press enter there, and that's going to move it on to another line. And then when I click, click away, it does a little bit better. Um, I'm going to go back here. That one also is a little bit long, so I'm going to see it there. And now I can change the size. So I can go into the text symbol tab here, and I can change the size. So maybe I just want it as 11. Hit apply, and now it's small. So now I can put that on my map, and I have all of my, my referencing data, my map projection, my name, I've got the date, I've got my legend, my scale ratio, my scale bar, my north arrow, and my neat line, which automatically updates around here. So I'm just missing my title. So I'm going to click on my straight text, create here, and this one is my city campus. So let's double check to make sure we have 10 elements on the map. So again, if you ever want to change anything, you just double click it. It's going to come here. I can change my text symbol, change it to some other fancy thing if I want. There's my wide Latin, hit apply. Now it's too big. <laughs> so, so now I need to, oh, let's say 45, apply. Now it fits on the page. Okay, so now I have a title, I have my north arrow, I've got my neat line, I've got my scale ratio, my scale bar, I, did, I pointed backwards, I've got my legend, my name, the map projection, the data citation, and the date that I published the map. Those are all of the 10 elements that you need to have on your map, and you should have on every map so that you have that. Now to export this as a PDF, this is something I haven't covered in class yet, but if you're at this point and you've got everything ready to export, you can go up to share. So there's two ways to do this. So you can go up to share and you can say export layout and it gives you different options for, um, for the PDFs. I would prefer if you do use a PDF so you can use a flattened PDF, but it tends to come up with errors with the north arrow. So try going to print layout instead. Now in the print layout, when you click down, you should be able to do Adobe PDF or you can do print to PDF. Both of them work. Um, if, you, if you get an error with one, obviously, then you want to switch to the other one, depending on the computer that you're using and the one you have at home. Um, so once I have that, then I can say print. I can also change it so it fits the paper size. But if I do that, what happens? Well, my scale is wrong. So I'm going to say actual. So don't try to like fit it to paper size. Look at where this gray line is. If that doesn't look right, then, then there's an issue with where you've placed your map on the page. If it extends past, it means that some of this data is falling off that page as well. So I'm going to click print now. It's going to print my layout. It will pop up with a save window. So then I can save it where I can find it, of course. And so in here, I would say campus map layout. And you're gonna put your name, right? So making sure you have that, click save. It's going to continue to print it. It says it's complete. So now when I go to look up my my file and just hold this up. 
So when I go to look for it, it's going to be in my folder. And now I've got this campus map, double click, and it shows up. And here is everything as a PDF. So this is what you're going to be providing me. And that is, um, that, that's the first part that you're going to provide me. And then the other one that you're going to give me is a link to the web map. And so I haven't shown that in class yet, so I'm going to go up here. I'm just going to show in this video, I know it's kind of a weird add-on to put into this, but you're going to log into ArcGIS Online. And you're going to go to your content. Now, remembering that you had um, created a web map, you're going to be able to open that. So we're I'm just going to open it up in Web Viewer Classic. And now there's this share button here. So I'm going to click share and it's like, tell me who this, who can use this. Um, really, you don't need to worry too much about this. You really just need the link. So I just need this value. So you would copy that if you want. You can even put that on your map layout. So if you put that there and you go back and you want to add web link and then add it in there, you can do that too. Just make sure that when you do tell me, like that you tell me if you do that so that I am aware you, or at least you tell me that it is the web link. So, so what I mean by that, if you're going to put it on this map, you are going to insert and you're going to add straight text. And then you in here, you're going to say web map link. And then I would post it to that page. Okay. So make sure that you tell me that, or you can just add it in your comments in D2L. And that is the end of this assignment.